Welcome to this video, which is the third video in our build series of how we designed and built this gaming table. This video is going to showcase a step-by-step -step with pictures of the actual steps that we went through in order to build and assemble this table. If you haven't seen this video yet, we will go ahead and link that in the description, as well as this next video, uh, which showcases how we actually went through and designed this in Tinkercad. So that's mostly a Tinkercad video to showcase how we went ahead and designed this table. So first thing first, big shout out to my local makerspace actually, which is where I ended up with this giant pile of wood. So this is Wormy American Chestnut Wall Paneling that one of the other members at my local makerspace was ripping out of their basement. And uh, they were selling it for quite the steal, and I was able to pick up a ton of this wood. But if you look closely, um, there's definitely some water damage. There's a lot of split pieces, uh, pieces that the sides weren't very nice. So all of the lumber that I used for this, I did have to mill up joiner, planer, cross cuts on the sled, things like that. And so a lot of work went into making this lumber usable lumber. But if you're planning to build this table and you can just source yourself some three-sided lumber, that's a great way to go. This one just had some extra processes to get to some wood that we could actually use. So here's our first image of our table build, which is actually a few steps into the process. The first thing we did was cut this three-quarter inch plywood into a seven foot by four foot rectangle. That was the size that we wanted for our table. Then the next thing we did was we cut off these corners. We just set up a guide and used a circular saw in order to cut these corner edges here. After that, we went ahead and we marked in pencil every single piece that was going to be added onto the top of this plywood. So this plywood is kind of the base of our table and everything's gonna kind of build up from here. You can see I'm actually drilling holes down. These are pilot holes that I'm drilling down into the table so that we can actually drill up into these later, but we know that they're nice and in the center of the pieces or we're actually gonna be screwing into this plywood. So we marked and we started drilling holes. Here is a little bit of a closer look uh, where we labeled things. Uh, these are our hinge blocks is what we called them. So it's the bottom piece of our hinge and that's most of what we had actually screwed in was just this hinge block. Everything else is actually just wood glued to this table. Here you can see we've put the bottoms of our hinges into the table. So this is where we screwed and glued into the plywood. So these are all glued down and they are all screwed from the bottom. We did go ahead and actually extend our pilot holes a little bit from the bottom, but coming from the bottom, we were able to use what was already in the plywood as a guide so we could kind of get right into the center of these plywood pieces. Now, first big design note here is that plywood is, was a terrible application for these hinges. And most of that came down to the fact that we were using these kind of in a, a vertical orientation. And so we were doing a lot of screwing into these, but between the laminations in, in the different layers. And that caused a lot of screws to want to pull slightly in one direction or another. So we had a really hard time keeping everything straight. If we could go back and fix one thing in this project, that would be that our hinges would not be made of plywood. Plywood works great for the bottom, but we would definitely go for a um, different hardwood for these hinges and not do plywood like we did here for these hinges. Next step after those bottom pieces were in was to put these inner rail pieces along the insides of those. And they basically just butted up right against the insides of the hinges. So we were able to glue it down to the plywood and glue it up against those vertical hinge pieces. And here what we're doing, this is not a part that you could actually see in the design, but it's something that we added for a little bit of extra stability. And that is all of these little vertical um, rectangles. And these really help to hold up the 
outer pieces that kind of lay across those. Some of those pieces are part of the player stations and they fold down, but there's also a lot of pieces that are permanently affixed and we wanted them glued to something more than just these inner railing pieces for added stability. So we added in some little blocks to the kind of the hidden side of a lot of these hinges where you really wouldn't see them. Now here is an image where we started to do some of the top. These we made sure to cut at the same angle as the bottom of the corner. And these pieces are stable. These are affixed and these do not move. Here's what I was doing while my husband was doing all of that work. He was definitely the assembly person while I was sitting and babysitting the CNC machine. You don't really have to CNC for this project. We ended up doing a lot of CNC work. We did our table legs out of these, all of the cup holders ended up being from CNC parts, as well as our hinges. So here is our table legs, all assembled, as well as the runner that goes from the front or the one leg to the other, if you will. So for this table build, for these table leg builds, we had two pieces that were the entire length. And then the third piece to make up each leg was actually two pieces that had a bit cut out of it so that we got this little bit of an overlap here. These we just screwed right into the plywood. Everything's glued together. So these are really nice and solid. Took a ton of sanding to make sure that we could get these nice and smooth and ready for our final table build. One thing that you won't see here is how we affixed the top of the table, that plywood, to the legs. And this one, we basically just used a Forstner bit to take out a little bit of a circle here and we used some figure eight fasteners. So the figure eight fasteners were attached to the tops of the legs, and then we were able to use the other part of that to drill directly up into the plywood. We've got some of these top railing pieces, the permanently affixed ones are going on, and then kind of the gaps that you have left are where those player stations are. You can also see some of our cup holders in the process of being built. We were using those a lot to make sure that as we were making these cubbies, we had enough space for those to slide in and out. So here's the part that was probably some of the most difficult, and that was getting those hinges just right. And here again is where I really wish we had used anything other than plywood, because getting these three screws on each side to go straight in was really difficult. They, even with pilot holes, they wanted to kick slightly to the side, which made the hinges slightly off center. Everything ended up working out okay for us, but that was one thing that is really important when you are doing these hinges is that these hinges are very straight and very square to your workpiece so that when you fold those hinges, it's not trying to shift that piece left or right so that when it opens and closes, that top piece that's going to be affixed to it stays in line. So this is kind of how our hinges ended up looking. You can see the open one here with the screws and then you can see close kind of what that ends up looking like. So here we are actually gluing the first of our player stations onto the hinges. We decided to do that with it closed, so it's currently clamped and gluing to this hinge here. We did not put any screws between this and the hinge. We did just use glue. So far it seems to be holding pretty well. We could have actually put a decent amount of weight on it and we've not had any pieces that have felt like they were going to come away. Certainly don't sit on these hinges when they're open. Um, but that a lot of that is aesthetic, right? Because there's not really a lot of good ways to hide some of those screws and have this really nice consistent top. So we did just end up gluing that and that's all that it is holding that on. So here's just a quick and short video, just kind of showing the hinge after it's been glued on, how it opens and folds out. So 
So here's an image that kind of showcases that it's a little short. Um, we're pretty much right at 11 inches, maybe off by a quarter of an inch, but uh, you can really get a full sheet of paper on there pretty well. Dice, you've got your, your cup holder that pulls out. That cup holder does not have the faceplate on it just yet, so that one's kind of still in the works, but just making sure that everything was there and working. And again, you can see this, you know, cracking on the inside of this piece of wood, and that's just kind of the charm of this table. I mean, this is old, wormy chestnut wood, and we wanted that older look to it. Uh, one thing you'll actually also see here is what we had to do is we had to take a thinner piece of plywood and glue that up to a piece that I had planed down of that wormy chestnut. So the top still shows the wormy chestnut, but when you fold it out, it's actually plywood on the bottom. And that's because this wormy chestnut is absolutely terrible when it comes to being a writing surface. There's just way too many holes in it. And I didn't really feel like trying to fill every single one of those holes. So we went ahead and we just kind of had it match the plywood that was already going to be half of it anyway. So as you're looking to build your own table, do think about that, that you might want to match the plywood if you're gonna use that same plywood base that we did. Otherwise, you can just use that same three quarter inch thickness of whatever wood you have, and then you might have just a little bit of variance between those two. And here we are, we have everything glued up. All of those player stations are glued and together. One of the things that we really tried to pay a ton of attention to was at least on our long sides, we wanted to have a continual grain pattern. So everything we did here when we cut, we tried to just cut once as close as we could. So we were really careful. We double, triple, quadruple checked our measurements before we cut this board down into pieces. And this is the first of our face plates going in to be glued. Now, again, I spent a ton of time babysitting the CNC machine in order to get these ready to go. One thing that's really important here that I wanna really showcase is the angles of these miter cuts. And these are 22.5 degree angled cuts. And here's just a little picture of how we ended up doing that corner glue up. We had those pieces that we had cut off of the edges of the plywood. So we stuck that in the corner so we were able to get our nice, uh, easy way to clamp. And again, here's a picture of some CNC pieces that I was working on. These were the face plates for all of our cup holders. They all had drink designs to them. And this is probably the best picture we have of the glue up of that process of creating those cup holders. You can see here we have a base that goes all the way to the back. We had one more piece to raise it up just a little bit so that our drinks weren't super deep in those. And then we have this back piece. And what this back piece does is there's a little tiny piece of wood that we glued to the front so that as you pull this out, it acts as a stopper. So it basically stops at the back of this and you can't um, kind of pull it past that. Although for ours, you can actually kind of angle it a little bit and pull them out uh, and actually slide them back in. And we just use Johnson's Paste Wax on the bottom of these uh, in order to make them slide in and out a little bit easier. And then here's a close up of a cup holder minus a faceplate that does get glued on next to these. And here's one that you can see where we have glued that faceplate onto there. Um, and this is all kind of pre-sanding. So what you see here is, is really rough. And after a ton of time, actually a ton of time that my husband spent sanding, we were finally able to put some oil on here. We used Danish oil for our table and really loved the light golden appearance that it gave us for our wood. A picture of everything once we got it all oiled up. We did use poly on the plywood parts so that those had a little bit more water protection and things like that where people would be kind of using those things. 
So that is our table, kind of all the player stations pulled out. So after we had built the table, one of the things we had left to do was the table leaves. And we didn't, at this point in the project, we didn't particularly feel like trying to glue up a bunch of American chestnut pieces in order to make the table leaves. So we actually found this table at our local restore. And we basically broke this table down and used our table saw to cut out our own leaves. And after milling those up, sanding them down, we actually ran them through the planer a few times. We went ahead and put them on the table. We didn't love this light look, so we went ahead and stained those to get that little bit of a darker contrast. So here is our table now with pretty much everything done. One of the things that we did at the very end was we created these face plates that actually went over where the open side of the player stations would be when the player stations were closed up. So what that allows us to do is have a fully enclosed table along the sides. Full disclosure, we have not quite figured out how to permanently or, or actually semi-permanently affix those. Our plan is to go ahead and to magnetize these face plates, but we haven't done that step just yet. So these are just using a little bit of double-sided sticky tape at the moment to put them in place to kind of show off the table. That's our very last thing that we have to do for this build. And we are so excited about this table. We've definitely loved the fact that we can use it in so many different ways. So this is using the table with our table leaves in, where we can actually stand and play at a standing height pretty easily. You can also open up the table. We have our neoprene mat in the bottom and we're able to use a slightly smaller play space if that's what you're looking to do there. We've used our table for several different games. We also have the television box that we built. That was actually the first thing that we built and we decided on the height of our build in based around this television box that we had built. And of course, a little bit of D&D &D as well. Uh, one of the things that we didn't actually show you is that we used a Forstner bit and we cut a nice hole into the side where our dungeon master sits. So we just have this hole on one side and we're actually able to feed electric in through here. There are some places where if you wanted to build in electric into your table, there's a few places where you can actually kind of hide or build those in. There's this cubby here in the center. This is kind of hollow on the inside, so you could definitely put something in there. This was a very difficult build for us. We are not expert woodworkers by any stretch of the imagination. This is the biggest undertaking we have ever done by 100 miles. This was a really difficult project for us. We learned a ton building this project. I got a lot of time in on the CNC. This was actually my first big CNC project that I had ever done as well. So I had to spend a ton of time really getting to know that and definitely improved along the way, knowing what depths I could actually cut to and how much detail I could pull out of the CNC. So that's gonna wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and best of luck with your own table builds.